A clear vindication for Brazil's former leader, Lula da Silva. A top court rules the judge who convicted him of corruption was biased, clearing the way for another possible run for the presidency. But can Lula win over Brazilians once again? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbarra. He's one of the most popular figures in Brazil, but the corruption conviction of Luis Inácio Lula da Silva in 2017 divided public opinion. His supporters said the leftist leader was a victim of political persecution, while Lula dismissed it as a ploy to sideline him from the 2018 presidential election, which was won by the far-right chair Bolsonaro. Now, Brazil's top court has ruled the judge in Lula's corruption case was biased. And evidence gathered in the investigation will not be used in any future trial. The ruling follows another Supreme Court decision to throw out Lula's conviction earlier this month. That has opened the way for the former leader to pursue his political ambitions. And after Tuesday's vindication, many say he is in a strong position to challenge President Bolsonaro in 2022. Lula da Silva was charged as part of a large corruption investigation nicknamed Operation Car Wash. He was convicted of bribery in 2017 for reportedly accepting an apartment from a company in exchange for government contracts. The following year, another court found him guilty of corruption and was sentenced to a total of 26 years. Da Silva served just 18 months of a reduced sentence of eight years and was released from prison after appealing against multiple convictions. But leaked messages in 2019 revealed Judge Sergio Moro, who presided over Lula's trial, had been actively directing prosecutors in the case. And now the Supreme Court has said Moro was not an impartial judge. The possible political return of Lula da Silva comes at a tough time for Bolsonaro. Brazil's president is facing mounting criticism for his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. More than 300,000 Brazilians have now died from the virus, and the country is struggling to contain a surge in new infections. Bolsonaro, who initially resisted lockdown measures, has now announced a committee to tackle the crisis. He pledged to deliver more vaccines in televised speech on Tuesday. But his comments were greeted by loud protests across the country. Let's bring in our guests in Sao Paulo, Gustavo Ribeiro, a journalist and editor-in-chief of the Brazilian Report. In Washington, D.C., Paulo Sotero, a distinguished fellow at the Woodrow Wilson Center's Brazil Institute. From Ifran in Morocco, Nizar Massari, Vice President for Academic Affairs at Al Akhawain University and former professor at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro. Welcome to you all. Gustavo, the ruling by the Supreme Court that the judge who was prosecuting Lula was biased. What does it mean for Lula? Is it likely to be seen as a final vindication for his case? Well, this ruling does not say that Lula was innocent and does not get into the merits of the evidence that was presented. But actually, it says a lot about the Operation Car Wash and about uh, how his unorthodox methods were borderline illegal and in Lula's case were illegal. Uh, it is a sort of vindication because Lula now can say, and he has a, a Supreme Court ruling to back his words, that he was targeted from the get-go by the prosecutors who staged this uh, anti-corruption effort, which was Brazil's biggest anti-corruption effort uh, in history. Uh, but uh, like you said, uh, re uh, revealing in 2019 showed that uh, Sergio Moro was acting as a sort of quarterback for the, for the prosecution team, did not meet his uh, role as a, a neutral empire, and now, I mean, uh, when we look at the mm -hmm. case of Lula, if we remove the names, 
and we say a judge made uh, the leading candidate to a presidential election ineligible and then joined the cabinet mm -hmm. of the person who won that election, uh, it doesn't seem legitimate at all. All right. Paolo, now, if you see this against the backdrop of the two key rulings, the one that says that the judge was, uh, was biased, the second one that scrapped the corruption conviction of the former president, citing jurisdiction issues and saying that he has to, he has to be retried uh, once again in uh, Brasilia, what does it mean? Are we likely to see the whole trial process reviewed? Uh, it's difficult to know because to, to answer this, because you know the Supreme Court of Brazil has become a source of instability in the political process. Uh, for instance, uh, the judge that started this process of reversing uh, uh, sentences against Lula had voted in one instance eight, uh, 10 times in the opposite direction. Uh, it looks like as the Gustavo says, and as the, the, the presentation piece uh, 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 points out, uh, news are basically good for the former president. He seems to be vindicated, uh, but uh, uh, he will face in a new presidential election mm -hmm. a complete different situation of a country that is already uh, very divided and polarized, then will be further divided and polarized by uh, an electoral campaign that is still, uh, the, the election is 18 months away, uh, but the campaign should start any moment now. Uh, this is really uh, not good, good for uh, governance. This is mm -hmm. not particularly hopeful uh, for democracy. Uh, and uh, but the president has returned to the stage, showing his famous capacity to, uh, you know, uh, address people. All right. Uh, to we to will, make. Uh, we, we will talk uh, more about Bolsonaro and the future. Niza, for the time being, as far as the supporters of uh, Lula da Silva are concerned, this was an, a character assassination, a political persecution. And the sentiment now is that the whole process that started back in 2017 was just for that particular reason, to undermine uh, Lula da Silva. Do you think that he will be able to re-establish re his political re uh, reputation? Uh, Lula is a polarizing figure in Brazilian politics. Um, and he has always been so, although he left the presidency with some 80% of uh, popularity, but he is a polarizing figure. And uh, the, the events over the last few years with uh, the Operation Car Wash have, have made him even more polarizing. So even after these latest uh, uh, decisions by the judiciary, um, Many uh, people who are against Bolsonaro still feel that the Lula is not a legitimate candidate, that he was freed by the, 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 by the justice system for uh, reasons that have nothing to do with justice. So uh, those who are uh, against Lula will remain against him, and he has a very uphill battle in order to recover that land. However, as you said, those who are with him uh, feel that he is vindicated, that he was uh, unfairly judged, and that he has to be back uh, at the political uh -huh. game and uh, to do what he was doing for them when he was president in his eight years of glorious presidency for a lot of people uh, in Brazil. So. That polarizing figure that was uh, there in the 1990s uh, uh, is back now and uh, more polarizing as ever. Gustavo, quite a fascinating judicial saga here. Two key figures, Sergio Moro, the guy who was widely seen as incorruptible. Now people are really suspicious about his legacy. On the other hand, diametrically opposed to his legacy is Lula da Silva. He was tried, and now people say, wait a second, maybe the guy is, was innocent. What happens next, do you think, to Sergio Moro? Well, I think uh, Sergio Moro is in a very tough position because he was once considered a presidential 
potential presidential candidate. Uh, he has been engulfed by uh, the Jair Bolsonaro administration. He he said he announced when he announced he was leaving the bench and joining the administration. He says that uh, he realized that as a judge he could do just so much for his anti-corruption agenda and that he needed a political platform. But he didn't do that with a party or with a project. Actually, we know very little about what Modo thinks about the state, about healthcare, about uh, how to manage a state. And uh, he joins the Bolsonaro administration. Every single attempt of pushing for his agenda was neutered by the president, uh, which shows, uh, at the very least, very poor judgment from Modo's part. And now he's in a limbo that uh, he was working for a consultancy company, which has as client mm -hmm. Odebrecht, which was the uh, uh, common thread of this Operation Car Wash scandal. So I think his, uh, his reputation is quite tarnished, not only because of what happened to Lula, but also because of what happened during his stint as justice minister, which was highly ineffective. Paulo, this is, I know that we were talking earlier about those judges reversing their decisions. But however, when you look at the evidence, strong evidence established by investigative reporters back in 2019 and 20, Sergio Moro was speeding up the proceedings to bar Lola from uh, running in 2018. This is someone who was colluding with prosecutors to tarnish the reputation of Lula. Ultimately, we're talking about someone who was manipulating the judicial system to his own political uh, advantage. Yes, he was uh, uh, working against the rule of law in Brazil uh, in doing so. Uh, he uh, can be seen now or is seen by, especially by Lula sympathizers, as a, a co-conspirator in this effort uh, to in avoid or prevent Lula from running in 18. I think uh, uh, he may face uh, many difficulties, but uh, this story could continue, though, if he was biased uh, regarding to the, in the process uh, regarding Lula. How about the other ones? There are uh, many, many uh, processes uh, in the Lava Jato. Uh, was he fair in those? Uh, if he's not, are we going to reverse also those decisions? Is the Brazilian uh, uh, state going to reimburse all the fees and, 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 and financial uh, 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 sentences uh, against uh, people? There are, there are literally hundreds of former or businessmen, executives and former mm -hmm. politicians were found guilty. What happens with those? And, and that is also part of this uh, 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 very confusing situation that will be dealt with one way or the other All right. in the uh, electoral and, season. And this is exactly the same question which is go I'm going to relay back to Mr. Nizar Masari, which is basically, we're not only talking here about Lula, because if you remember back in 2017, the trial has been... Uh, a key moment that really meant that many high-profile businessmen, politicians affiliated with the Workers' Party, with Lula da Silva, uh, saw themselves uh, imprisoned. Do you think this is going to be the chance for them to say, since everybody is casting doubt on this particular proceedings and on the character of uh, Sergio Moro, it's about time for us also to be given vindication? This is the major risk for the operation for the operation uh, car wash uh, Lava Jato. This is the major risk, actually, and this is what some judges in the in the Brazilian uh, uh, Supreme Court are trying to avoid. They are trying to distinguish what happened with Lula with what uh, took place with other politicians who were uh, condemned by that same operation, and that is that, that is very tricky. But it has to take place because otherwise, uh, what was 
uh, seen, what is still considered by many Brazilians as a, a very important uh, moralizing operation in Brazilian politics, will um, uh, will uh, become a, a fiasco. And if it becomes a fiasco, then uh, Brazilians will lose faith in politics. We we see we saw them losing faith in politics by, uh, for instance, uh, electing someone uh, like Bolsonaro to the presidency. But if the, the, if people continue to consider that uh, the whole justice system uh, is corrupt, just like all the politicians are corrupt, just like all the business, uh, uh, many people in the business sector, sector are corrupt, then they will lose faith in the institutions, they, lo they will lose faith in the country, and they will start looking for uh, a savior. And uh, every time people in the country in general, people in Brazil, in particular, look for a savior. Uh, it has led them. It has led the country to uh, very unfortunate consequences. So uh, I think that uh, this the, the, the justice system, the, the Supreme, the Brazilian Supreme Court, the STF, is um, very aware of that, and uh, there is uh, um, there is an attempt to distinguish. What happened to Lula from what happened uh, okay. to the others? Although all the the lawyers of all the other condemned will be trying their luck and trying to do their best to release their uh, their uh, uh, clients uh, from Brazilian jails, and that's a risk. All yes, right. absolutely. Gustavo, obviously, this should come at a bad time for President Jair Bolsonaro. Do you think that this is something that could potentially undermine his chances to win re-election? Definitely. I think until uh, two weeks ago, Bolsonaro was the head and shoulders favorite to win re-election because no other force had emerged to challenge him. Despite what we're seeing with the situation of the pandemic, despite economic anxieties being on a, on a rise, uh, Bolsonaro has not yet been challenged by a, a worthy opponent. And now he has someone who, just as he does, can command the media agenda, can command the political agenda. And uh, the fact that Lula in his first speech, which, I mean, is uh, in everything is stomp speech but name, um, he made nods to the armed forces, to the police forces, to conservative sectors, trying to present himself as a centrist, trying to essentially break with uh, his demeanor between 2016 when Dilma Rousseff is impeached and uh, until the moment he leaves prison, which is a mm -hmm. fierce Lula. And going back to his 2002 persona, which uh, we called in Brazil, peace and love Lula, which was uh, a conciliatory figure who wanted to mm -hmm. build bridges between liberal and conservatives. And uh, if he does that, he will actually uh, uh, concentrate the anti-Bolsonaro field around himself so uh, I, the, the, the 2022 election has started the moment Lula got his political rights back. Right. And I, I believe we're going to see the face of polarized between these two. Paulo, now, could this be the only moment for Bolsonaro to reach out to the central, particularly the centrist right-wing bloc, for any hope to secure a second term? Uh, well, he, he, he may try, but he doesn't have the political skills, the talent, or the conviction. He is uh, a radical, an unprepared leader who has demonstrated that clearly in the fight against the pandemic. Uh, he is, uh, basically, he gave up. He never uh, directed a strategy to mm. that. He is in the fourth uh, minister of health. Uh, and he continues to, you know, uh, present and to offer the Trumpian-like solutions of therapies that we know for sure uh, does not work. Brazil has already surpassed the 300,000 people mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. At the current rhythm, we should be in two months, two and a half months, at the uh, at the, the, the 400,000. And uh, uh, this is uh, makes very... It's very difficult for Bolsonaro to run for re-election. At the same time, mm -hmm. he has a following of the people that elected him. All right. Remember, he was elected by the people. But I have to uh, say that just, back uh, then when he was 
elected, there was an unprecedented anti-establishment, anti-leftist sentiment in Brazil following those trials, which could not be the case. And this leads me now to go to Nizar Massari about one particular thing, which is politics and vote and elections are mostly about perceptions. Now, what you have is two images here. One of Bolsonaro as someone widely seen as behind the biggest blunder when it comes to tackling COVID-19. On the other hand, you have Lula da Silva, widely seen as the architect of the most spectacular rise of a leftist, left-wing political party that was behind the most mm. unprecedented economic boom in the country. Just those two perceptions could be, could they be conducive to Lula coming back to power? Um, as someone uh, said or, earlier in this program, 18 months, uh, we, we, there are 18 months between us and the presidential elections, and 18 months is an eternity in politics. Many, many things can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, quite frankly, things don't look bright for, um, for Bolsonaro, uh, and uh, uh, things seem very difficult for uh, a serious candidate from the center uh, of the political spectrum, the Brazilian political mm -hmm. spectrum, to uh, become a serious candidate. Mm -hmm. But there are hopes from many people in the center that a, a candidacy can be brought up, that can be made, that can become credible. And uh, the um, polarization between these two people, these two uh, polarizing figures can be broken okay. uh, and uh, someone from the center can make it to the second round of, uh, of the elections. Very little time uh, left if here. The, if and the second I, round... I really appreciate if you can give me just some very short answers here. Let me start with Gustavo. Gustavo, the, the, the judges who reversed their decisions in this Supreme Court, widely seen as a, re, uh, as a manifestation of the polarization in the country between the far right and, uh, and the left. This cultural war between the left and the far right, what is going to be its ramification of the future of Brazil? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that we are seeing a cultural war between the left and the far right, but between the far right and everyone else, because uh, right now, like you said, the anti-establishment sentiment is not here anymore. Actually, people want the state to be present and to tackle this pandemic, which what Bolsonaro has failed to do. Congress has essentially cornered him and said either he changes his demeanor or uh, maybe Congress will mm -hmm. resort to bitter pills. Okay. So I, I, I don't believe that Bolsonaro is changing his demeanor. I think we're going to see the situation degrading much further between okay. before anything gets better. Paolo, you have two things here, COVID-19 and the resources that were put into place uh, uh, to finance the economy over the last few months are most likely going to dry up in the upcoming weeks. What are the chances for Bolsonaro to get his act together and move forward? In less than a minute, please. I, I'm not positive, I'm not optimistic about that because he doesn't believe in science. He is incompetent as an uh, administrator, as a, <laughs> uh, as a president, and uh, he will continue to try to find uh, temporary solutions, maybe disbursement of more money to the people that could uh, help his popularity. But uh, uh, Bolsonaro is basically okay. hopeless as people think. Last question to Nizar. Nizar, this is a country that has started, was beset by the military junta for quite some time in its past, and then this was this transition into democracy and now with the far right in, uh, in the government, uh, people are pretty much concerned about what might happen next if the divide continues in the country. How do you see it? Well, uh, and that's what uh, I, I tend to disagree with uh, my friend Paolo Sotero. I think that's uh, what uh, Bolsonaro will be trying to do if things get, uh, continue getting bad for him, is to play the, the far right and to try to create uh, a movement in Brazil that will throw the institutions away, the democratic institutions away. That's far-fledged, and um, I sincerely hope this will not happen, and I sincerely hope that my dear friends in Brazil will resist mm -hmm. that. But uh, that's my fear from here, from Iran, from Morocco, and to see the, something as ugly as that taking place. And the big question is whether Lola da Silva will be able to stage a political comeback. His reputation massively 
tarnished back in 2017. However, he says he will have some weeks to talk to the people before coming up with a decision whether or not he will go for the 2022 election. In the meantime, I really appreciate your contribution. Gustavo Ribeiro, Paulo Sotero, Nizar Masari, thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to talking to you in the near future. Thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hashim Ahlbala and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.